Hello everybody, we're getting ready to do lesson 2.3 part 2 of pre-calculus math today. Here is my contact email for materials and questions, solution PowerPoints. 2.3 part 2. We got 68 points here of classwork lecture. You can get a note-taking guide that will help you on those notes. And then a notebook entry. This goes into your notebook. Six points of that. Teachers, today's bell work. Uh, use any convenient method to solve this quadratic here. Uh, students, give your students about ooh, five, six minutes for this. Okay, welcome back for our solutions for today's bell work. And for this one, this quadratic here, well, I guess that's my y-intercept there. And then down here would be the, the vertex here. And then here is a uh, x-intercept there as well, a zero there. So you should be able to sketch your parabola there. There's a rough sketch of the parabola for this uh, quadratic. And then using your quadratic formula would be another way to solve it. Here would be a solution, then here would be a solution. So here is a 0 here, negative 3, plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. And that amounts to negative 3 over 2, which I, I guess that would be that, uh, plus uh, square root of 3 over 2, then uh, negative 3 over 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2, so you have two negative uh, x uh, uh, coordinates there where uh, the parabola intersects the x axis. These would be your zeros. And then down here, we can just factor this thing straight up into two binomials. And then x equals 5 over 4 and 3 over 2. So here are your x's. 5 over 4, and then 3 over 2. Okay, 1 and 1 half. Okay, and then there is, here it would be your um, vertex here. And then that would be a rough sketch of this parabola here. So that would be another way of solving it, would be finding your zeros. And then um, this would be 1.5 1, 1. here, and this would be 1.4. <clears throat> then that would be the way that you would solve it. Okay, moving into our lesson today, class worksheet, page 1. Another important theorem is the factor theorem. This theorem states that you can test whether a polynomial has x minus k as a factor by evaluating a polynomial at x equals k. If the result is 0, then x minus k is a factor. Then we go into the factor theorem itself. So the statement of the factor theorem is a polynomial, polynomial f of x as a factor x minus k if and only if f of k equals 0. So that would be the theorem there. That would be on your note-taking guide, or you should take that down in your notebook. <clears throat> Factoring a polynomial, repeated division. Show that x minus 2 and x plus 3 are factors of this thing right here. Then find the remaining factors of f of x. So using synthetic division with a factor x minus 2, you obtain this array here of using a synthetic division, you end up with a zero. So this confirms that x minus 2 is a factor of this polynomial. Here's your remainder of zero, so that confirms x minus 2 is a factor of this polynomial. Take the result of this division and perform synthetic division again using a factor x plus 3. So now we're going to use x plus 3 into the remaining <clears throat> part of that polynomial. 
and then we get another zero so that confirms that x plus 3 is a factor as well because we have 0 as a remainder and then we have 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 which is a quadratic uh, because the resulting quadratic factors as 2x plus 3 and x plus 1 here is your factoring now of that polynomial x minus 2 x plus 3 2 x plus 3 and x plus 1 so now that we know that we can find our zeros and then the graph will confirm it here uh, you have this situation here uh, x is negative 1 x equals negative 3 is over here this is x equals 2 and then up here is x equals negative 3 over 2 so the graph itself confirms it and then you can find these on your graph by using your intersect menu for to find those trace and intersect okay let's go into a guided practice uh, verify the given factors so we are given these of the function f find the remaining factors of f use your results to write the complete factorization of f list all real zeros of f Confirm your results by using a graphing utility to graph the function. So, okay, so we're going to confirm these things by first uh, doing x minus 5 using synthetic division that confirms that we have a remainder of 0. And then uh, x plus 4, that's a 0, 2. So, by doing that, <clears throat> we're left with this thing here. And then we can go through and factor that. So x squared minus 3x plus 2, that factors off into this. So now we have our four binomials here. So the remaining factors are x minus 2, x minus 1. So x minus 5, x plus 4, x minus 2, and then x minus 1. Here are your four binomials that factor the original polynomial. And students, I want you to put your uh, responses into these boxes. This is how you're going to get graded. Whatever's in this box, you get graded on. Everything that's outside, I'm not going to grade. So put your responses inside here. And then the graph for this, this thing is right here. So you have uh, x-intercepts here, 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 and over here. And that corresponds with your using your zero uh, product property. The, uh, by using these factors here that confirms the graph or rather the graph confirms this actually so there's your solution for that using the remainder in synthetic division in summary the remainder r obtained in the synthetic division of f of x by x minus k provides the following information one the remainder r gives the value of f at x equals k that is r equals f of k. Two, if r equals zero, then x minus k is a factor of f of x. And then three, if if x equals zero, uh, then k and zero is an x-intercept. Over there, that's not x. That if r equals zero, then k zero is a x-intercept of the graph of f. So here is your remainder using the remainder in synthetic division. This is how you can use it. And that is very crucial in you finding zeros by using synthetic division. This is page one of your class. Okay, the rational zero test. If the polynomial, and this is your standard form of polynomial, everything descends from left to right, has integer coefficients, then every rational zero of f has the form of p over q. So <clears throat> you have integer coefficients, and then p is your constant, and then q would be your coefficients here. Where p and q have no common factors other than one, p is a factor of the constant term a naught, which is over here. This would be a naught. And then q is a factor of the leading coefficient a to the n. So we put p over q and then factor that out as possible zeros of this point. So let's put a little bit of that in the, in the practice here. 
So use the rational zero test. First, list all rational numbers whose numerators are factors of the constant term. So the constant goes in the numerator and whose denominators are factors of the leading coefficient, which goes into the denominator. Now that you've formed this list of possible rational zeros, use a trial and error method to, to determine which, if any, are actual zeros of the polynomial. This is one method of doing it. If like your graphing calculator breaks down or your battery goes dead, you could try this method here. Let's go into an example and test some of this. Example 7, rational zero test the leading coefficient of zero. So here is a cubic third degree polynomial. Because the leading coefficient is 1, here's our 1. The possible rational zeros are simply the factors of the constant term, which in this case is 1. Possible rational zero would be plus or minus 1. By testing these possible zeros, you can see that neither works. So if you plug this in here, you get a, a, a result here of 3. It's not exactly what we're looking for. Then you put in negative 1, you get negative 1. So none of them come up 0. So you can conclude that the polynomial has no rational zeros. The graph of f does have one real 0, though, between negative 1 and 0. So you have this thing here, which is appears to be a rational 0 here by the rational zero test, you know that this real zero is not a rational number. So when we're using these tests of uh, synthetic division and then plugging in a, a value, we're looking for rational numbers. It won't cover the fact that an irrational number, you won't be able to find an irrational by using this, like in this case here. So for a guy to practice, Use the rational zero to, we're looking for a rational zero test to list all possible rational zeros of f. Then find the rational zeros. And this is yours down here, students, so pay attention up here. Okay, p is negative 3. Here's our p, negative 3. And q is 1 here. So here are our possible rational zeros plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. So uh, what we're going to do, x squared uh, times x plus 3 minus x plus 3. So we're going to, to, uh, we're going to factor out an x squared here. And then we get this situation here where this is a 1 here. So we can by, factor by grouping now. We have x plus 3 times x squared minus 1. Uh, we have a difference of a square here. That can be factored further. The rational zeros. But we're going to plug in with this here to see if, we, if we're going to find a rational 0 here, plus or minus 1, and then negative 3. I mean, we can find that here by solving for this here. I mean, we could factor that further, but there's no reason to go any further. So here are our rational zeros, plus or minus 1. That'll work here. <clears throat> and then negative 3 will work here. By using our zero product property, this is how we can deduce that here are our rational zeros. And then you can graph it to check yourself. Okay, notebook entry here. When the leading coefficient of a polynomial is not 1, the list of possible rational zeros can increase dramatically when your leading coefficient is not 1. A programmable, a programmable calculator can be used to speed up the calculations. A graphing utility can give a good estimate of the locations of zeros. The intermediate value theorem, along with a table generated by a graphing utility, can give approximation of zeros. The factor theorem and synthetic division can be used to test the possible rational zeros. Okay, let's go into an example 8 right now to test some of this stuff. Using the rational zero test, find rational zeros of this polynomial here. So the leading coefficient is 2. We get that. And the constant 
is 3. So what do we do with that? Possible rational zeros. We have 3 over 2 here. Factors of 3, factors of 2, plus 1, minus 1 and 3 over 1 and 2. So these are our possibilities here of rational zeros. It doesn't cover irrational zeros, but rational zeros. So knowing that, why don't we try something here? By synthetic division, let's try x equals 1 as a rational zero, and we come, up, we come up with a zero in our remainder. So this happens to be a zero here. Then when we uh, factor this into the original, we get 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And then what do we do with that? Well, that can be factored into 2x minus 1. Uh, times x plus 3. So here are zeros here. So x equals 1, x equals 1 half, and x equals negative 3 here are rational zeros for that polynomial. Here is the graph showing that to be the case. Uh, see, this is negative, see x, okay. So over here, this would be negative 3, and then here would be 1 half and then 1. So the graph does verify these zeros here. Okay, let's go into a guide to practice. Uh, use the rational zero test to list all possible rational zeros of f. Then find the rational zeros. Okay, so here's our original. We have a fourth degree polynomial here. So what do we do? So we have we have p as negative 45, and then our q is 2 here. Possible rational zeros are here. So which one are we going to, whoa, we continue. So we have a bunch of them. So which ones are we going to start with? We're going to use synthetic division. Using synthetic division, I'm going to leave that up to you. This is your response box here. So. Students, when you're doing this, uh, do your synthetic division on your paper that you can attach to this lesson. And by using synthetic division, we come up with negative 1, 3, and 5 are 0. So when you do this, take note up here, you have a fifth degree uh, polynomial here. So you're going to use uh, synthetic division probably three, four times. And what's it say to use? It says, it doesn't really tell you which method you could use other methods but using this method here this is what we came up with <clears throat> and then here is is this polynomial factored down to binomials to prove that so our rational zeros are negative 1 3 5 and 3 over 2 Okay, into another uh, test for zeros of polynomials nth degree polynomial function can have at most n real zeros. Many nth degree polynomials do not have that many real zeros, so the key word is real. For instance, uh, f of x equals x squared plus 1 has no reals, and then f of x equals x cubed plus 1 has only one real. The following theorem called Descartes' rule of signs sheds more light on a number of real zeros of a polynomial. So Descartes' rule of signs is this situation here. We have a standard form of a polynomial with real coefficients and a not can equal zero. So the number of positive real zeros of f is either equal to the number of variations <coughs> in the sine of f of x or less than that number by an even in integer. So the number of negative reals, these, these are positive reals, negative reals is uh, either equal to the number of variations in sine of f of negative x. So we stick f of negative x in there, up here f of negative x, or less than that number by an even in integer. So let's try some of these techniques. Page 12, this goes in your notebook, students. A variation in sign means that two consecutive non-zero coefficients have opposite signs. So when using Descartes' rule of signs, a zero of multipl multiplicity k 
should be counted as k zeros. For example, this polynomial here has two variations. This is positive, negative, negative, positive. It has two variations in sign. So, and so it has either two positives or no positive reals. So it has two variations, and that would mean that it has two positive or no positive real zeros. Because this polynomial equals this situation here, it has two positive reals here because of x minus 1, x minus 1. <clears throat> so it has two positive reals, which are x equals 1, of multiplicity 2. So, k. Okay. So that's a loaded concept there. Multiplicity of k should be counted as k. Let's get into an example of this to try this out. Using Descartes' rule of signs on this one here. So the original poly has three variations. Here's one variation, two variation, three variations in sign. So, and then here's the variation, this positive negative, a negative positive, and then positive negative. So this polynomial, when we plug in a negative x in there, we have no variations here. We do our uh, f of negative x into this polynomial here. What do we come up with? Once we plug that in, we plug in that. That's the original. It has no variations in sign. We have f of negative x. So from Descartes' rule of signs, polynomial here has either three positive reals, three positive reals, or one positive real zero and no negative real zeros. So by using the trace feature of your graphing utility, you can see that the function has only one real. It's right here. Here's your positive real. Well, it's 0 0.10. It's close to that. C x equals 1.02, y equals 0.1. So it has one positive. You check it with your graphing calculator, you can see that. So let's try one here in our guided practice. Use Descartes' rule of signs to determine the positive numbers of positive uh, and negative real zeros on this situation here. Students, this is yours here. So up here, <clears throat> There's four variations in the sign here. You have one, two, three, and then four variations. So you have four, two, or zero positive real zeros. You have four, two, or zero positive reals. So when you, put, when you plug in now f of negative x, you have no variations here in your signs. So that means zero negative real zeros. You have zero negative reals. So you have no negative reals in here. But you have either four, two, or zero positive reals. That's what you can deduce from by using Descartes' rule of signs. Okay, I guess I'm going to throw this in. So we have three sign changes here. Three or, three or one positive real. So let's see, one, that's, there's no change there. But there is a change here, one, two, and then three. So we have three sign changes. So we have three or one positive reals. And then when we plug in a negative x here, this is positive out here. So we have one sign change, which equals one negative real. So we have one negative real, and then three or one positive real. So this is uh, deduced from using Descartes' rule of sign. Notebook entry, students. Another test for zeros of polynomial function is related to the sign pattern in the last row of the synthetic division array. This test can give you an upper or lower bound of the real zeros of f, which can help you eliminate possible real zeros. A real number c is upper bound for the real zeros of f, f when no zeros are greater than c. Similarly, c is a lower bound when no real zeros of f are left. So let's see an example of that. <clears throat> Upper and lower bound rows. This is in your classwork. <clears throat> 
Let f of x be a polynomial with real coefficients and a positive leading coefficient. Suppose f of x is divided by x minus c using synthetic division. If c is greater than 0, each number in the last row is either positive or 0, then c is an upper bound <coughs> for the real zeros of f. And if c is less than 0, then the numbers in the last row are alternatively positive and negative, so zero entries count as positive or negative, then C is a lower bound for the real zeros of F. So what does that mean? Well, let's, let's get into an example here. <clears throat> Finding zeros of a poly, find the real zeros of this thing here. The possible real zeros <clears throat> are as follows. So we got factors of P over Q. And then here's our P, here's our Q, and we come up with this bunch here. So the original poly has three variations in sign. We have one, two, and then three variations here. Okay, so we have three, and then F of negative X, we have no variations. And yeah, so we have no variations in sign. We have F of negative X. So as a result of these two findings, you can apply Descartes' rule of signs to conclude that there are three positive reals or one positive real and no negative real zeros. This provides you no negative real zeros. Trying x equals 1 produces the following here. So when x equals 1, we have a remainder here of 3. So x equals 1 is not a zero, but because the The last row has all positive entries. You know that x equals 1 is an upper bound. That's how you can tell all uh, positive entries. So you know that x1 is an upper bound. So it's got to be below uh, 1 for real zeros. Therefore, you can restrict the search to zeros between 0 and 1. By trial and error, you can determine that x equals 2 thirds is a 0. So let's say by trial and error, good gosh. Uh, so, uh, factoring out at x minus two thirds out of that polynomial, you come up <clears throat> with this situation here: six x squared plus three has no reals. It follows that x equals two thirds is the only real zero. This is your only real zero here, and a graph will show that. I mean, you should probably go to a graph before maybe even you do this here to check it to check your to get your uh, two-thirds here, two-thirds zero, go to a graph. So you come up with that, that's a real zero. And then you can use uh, synthetic division to use two-thirds <coughs> to factor back into your, uh, what's left over from synthetic division. Okay, let's try one. <coughs> uh, finding zeros with poly use synthetic division to verify upper and lower bounds of real zeros of f, then find the real zeros of the function. So we have an upper bound here already. They give us an upper bound of 4 and a lower bound of negative 1. This is yours down here, students. Pay attention <clears throat> so you can do yours. So we have an upper bound here. So we can go ahead and, and plug that in. We have 15 here. <clears throat> So having that 4 would be, it proves that 4 is an upper bound by the fact that we, we checked it here and these are all positive. And then uh, 15 here is greater than the rest of these entries. So 4 is an upper bound. And then negative 1, <clears throat> it checks that that's a lower bound because you got negative uh, entries down here. <clears throat> so the real zeros in this case by using the calculator, uh, you can find that 1.937 is a 0 and then 3.705. So that is between negative 1 and 4. So that verifies that. Uh, and then you can jump on your stuff down here. Oh, I'm going to do it. Okay. We're going to check that. So 40, yeah, 40 is upper bound, or rather 4 is an upper bound. Then negative 3, we have negatives down here, so negative 3 is a lower bound. So real 0 check, we probably got this from a graph here. Or, <clears throat> gosh, I don't know how you get that from a table. Uh, 
but you could get it from a graph. You ultimately would have to graph it and then use your intersection uh, menu to get these numbers here. <clears throat> okay, example 11, finding zeros of a polynomial function. Find out reals of this thing. So remove the comma monomial factor. So how do we do that? Here's your monomial factor here. So x is a 0 of f. You just know immediately x is a 0 <clears throat> is an f. So it goes to the origin. You can find the remaining zeros of f by analyzing cu the cubic factor here, 10x cubed. Because the leading coefficient is 0, I guess that's here. I guess they're calling it a 0 because the leading coefficient is 10. Here's your leading coefficient here is 10. And a constant term is 12. There is a long list of possible rational zeros. You have a lot of factors of 10 and 12. So factors of 12 and 10, you come up with this thing here. With so many possibilities, 32 possibilities, it is worth your time to use a graphing utility to focus on just a few. By using the trace feature of a graphing utility, it looks like the three re reasonable choices are negative 6 over 5, 1 half, and then 2, which you write down here. So those would be your zeros there. The grapher is really a tool. Synthetic division shows that only x equals 2 works. So we have using synthetic division x equals 2 comes you come up with a 0 there so x equals 2 is 1 0 and you have this situation here x times x minus 2 times this quadratic there so how would you go from there you can use quadratic formula so you have uh, uh, one x is uh, 0.56 then the other x is negative uh, 1.06 so you find that the two additional zeros are irrational. So these would be, they're probably non-repeating decimals. And then that's why uh, it didn't come up on the, um, on the other ways of finding zeros, because we're always looking for, to find rational zeros. Okay, find all real zeros, or finding real zeros of this polynomial function here. Same thing down here for you students, is to find that. Okay, possible reals, p over q, and we come up with this bunch here. And then we can factor out on x, so x is a real. And then for here, we're just going to shoot for negative 2 here. And that happens to be a real 0 here, so uh, x plus 2 would be one, one factor of it, and that comes out to negative 2 as a real 0. And then use quadratic formula for this, which is left over, uh, 3x squared minus 6x minus 2. And then when we do that, we come up with this, and then we come up with that. So plus or minus zero. So real zeros are 0, negative 2, and then 3 plus or minus square root of 15 over 3. So that will be your <clears throat> real zero, zeros of this polynomial. And that is your 2.3 part two. <clears throat> Email me here for note-taking guides, uh, solution PowerPoints for your homework, and any other things that you need. Thank you very much.